my name is Joya Piles, and welcome to episode number 11 of Speedy Pit How To. In this episode, we're going to be going over how to best speedrun chapter 11, Viridi, Goddess of Nature. You might be wondering why my screens are black, and that's because I forgot to pause before I started this chapter, so I just went ahead and shut my 3DS screen. I do also want to touch up on the chapter 10 time. I had forgotten that the Hades cutscene happened here. So that seven and a half minutes with the Hades cutscene should really be about nine, nine and a half, but that's still about a minute time save, so that's pretty damn good. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Like I was saying in chapter 10, this is one of my favorite arcs. So I'm going to be taking a little more time here for what I do. I'm just clearing out this riffraff real quick. Okay, so in this area here, there's going to be enemies that you have to take out before you're allowed to progress. This blue... blue, that's purple. <laughs> Those purple vines will clear out right about now, and this is where you're going to want to use a lightweight. So you're going to use a lightweight, just dodge to the right a little bit, then cut straight to the left into this area. Hug the wall, and you're going to want to go through here. Normally you don't get stopped this badly by the electric enemies, but as you see here, I'm kind of, I'm kind of not going the most optimal path. Once those enemies have cleared, you'll get this open, just cut to the left onto the jump pad. Then there's going to be a couple more jump pads here. There will be enemies in the way, just do a dash melee attack broom and you'll be fine. Then there's this area here, I like to call it a courtyard. Go ahead and kill off that enemy if you don't feel like you can dodge it carefully enough. But you're just going to want to run across the bridges as quickly as possible and try your best not to get knocked off. Then we're going to come up here. And she's got a grind rail set up, so we can just sit and wait. Thanks, Baridi. Then we got this jump jump pad, and then we're going to want to run straight behind that guy. The next area, you usually do with an Aether Rain, but because it is a speed run, you're going to skip the Aether Rain entirely. So instead of taking that, you're going to use your other lightweight. Just try your best to avoid the electric enemies. So you're just gonna dash down this tree. And if you avoid the electric enemy, you'll have enough in that lightweight to carry you all the way over here. Because I messed up, kind of messed that up a little bit. Once you go up a jump pad, you're going to be able to hop all the way down here into this hot spring. Just go to the jump pad. And then there's this area. So this area is set up like a maze. So you're going to want to go left, then left. Then you're going to want to hook a right, then a left, then another left. And then there's going to be this one last gauntlet. That jitterfuck right there, what you need to do is melee if it's green, shoot if it's red. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a satanic, um, it's like a satanic Christmas monster. Once you kill off those, you're able to hop down. And take on Cragalanch. Now, if Cragalanch, the main thing you're going to want to do is get a good shot at its but Fortunately, it's 0.0, so it's really not going to take all that much. But as you saw in that death animation there, and you can kind of still make it out. This little spot right... Oh, it faded out. The little spot that he's sitting on, that little red part. 
You could take and shoot that, and he'll do quite a lot more damage than just shooting his rock face. But yeah, as you'll see there after you clear that, there's going to be a whole bunch of achievements that pop up. Don't worry too much about it. But yeah, let's go ahead and do the actual speed run part of it. Like I was saying earlier, this chapter takes about 8 minutes to clear. So let's try to do that. Alright, 3, 2, 1, Ale. I love the forces of nature, like, without a doubt, they're my favorite faction in this group. In this game, sorry, wrong G word. <laughs> but, the chapters really don't shine until chapter 13. Chapter 13, and especially chapter 14, those are some of my favorites in the entire game. Without a question. This one's all right, but it doesn't have the same sparkle. Exactly as Hades planned. He spread the rumor about the wish tree, and the humans were gullible enough to believe it. If only we had a chance to tell them the wish seed was a fake. Now look at them. It's like they've lost their humanity, and all they have left is brutality. What this scene reminds me of is the start of Fire Emblem Fates. Like you know that opening cinematic where it's like that massive war going on, and then it fades out to be a picture. That's what this reminds me of. Oh, say goodbye to the mono eye. Now imagine if Fire Emblem did that. It's like, you know what, Corrin? You suck as a character. Just meteor. <laughs> I'd love it. Nice shot if I do say so myself. Good riddance, Corrin. If only. If only goes for Corrin. You got it. I'm on it. So you're the famous Palatina. I heard you sing Viridi. And, and you're Viridi, a nobody until this game. I didn't know I had a fan club. You didn't until now. You know they're driven by selfishness. They think only of themselves. They were killing each other for, for what? A wish? A, a fake wish? wish? I don't remember Earth just being a whole bunch of vines and bark, but sure, Veridi, you know. Look at all the tree. Look at all the tree bark and tree branch. It's beautiful, right? And in a tree anus. I like running across that. Makes me feel good. She's not wrong. <laughs> She's really not wrong. True. Now, if only we can get one dropped on a certain person in a certain political building, that'd be lovely. Or at least something to reset that. We don't talk politics here. No, we're just a lovely video game channel. <laughs> Come here. There you go. I'll take that as a compliment. Come on out, Craglanch. Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna have about three and a half, three-ish minutes, so we're gonna need to hit the ground running here. Let's move. I should open a boot camp to toughen them up. Still wouldn't give them muscles like these. Ah. Still make our buildings in the fort. There must have been a town here. Keep that bomb. That's how you do that section a lot better, by the way. Their only purpose is to obliterate the human kind. Oh, is that it? Based on that, I'm guessing Viridi is one of those goddesses that kind of got with a human, and the human ended up treating her like crap. So she's kind of taking it out on everyone else. That's my personal headcanon, anyway. It's probably better than the actual reason. <laughs> but you are crafty, I'll give you that. Go over here, shoot that enemy down, shoot those. The ring. Nope, okay. ignore it, Pit. Believe me, I know. These things drive smooth. Plus, they provide protection and firepower. Is that good design or what? Ignore the Ephorine Pit. You don't need it. Pit move. But no one passed by Vervet. I'm not surprised. I can't believe you didn't think of that before. You were attacking. I was busy. Just leave me alone. Alright, so left, left, right. I have to remind myself every time I go through here because it never feels like I'm going the right way. The one takeaway that I get from that conversation is that Viridi, Viridi and the gods eat. That's the only takeaway I get from that conversation. So we'd lose a couple seconds there, but to be honest, that's not a bad chapter 11. That is not a bad chapter 11. Anyway, you'll notice that I didn't have to, like, sell stuff before we went into this chapter. That's because I did a little bit of farming. I played chapter 9 a couple times. And by a couple times, I literally mean twice. So what had happened was, you know that room where there's three sets of enemies that you have to defeat and then there's a clubber school? Well, in the second, the second enemy that you have to take on is a scuttler, right? I forgot that enemy's name for a second, but it's Scuttler. So, what I did was I tried to get a couple early hits off on it. The enemy never came up above the ground. So, that enemy wouldn't appear. The third enemy appeared, the suit of Scuttler. But because I never fully killed off the Scuttler itself, like the second Scuttler, not the suit of Scuttler, because I never killed off the Scuttler, I wasn't able to trigger the Clubber Skull appearing, which means I couldn't get the door to open, which means I was stuck in a room, which means I had to retreat, and I was left with seven hearts. Yes, seven hearts. Anyway, that's enough of my ranting for right now. In the next chapter, we're going to be going over Chapter 12, Wrath of a Reset Bomb. 
Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, this is JoyPal signing out. See ya! Thank you.